I don't use or listen to music as background. It's impossible for me to do that because I want to take so much from the music. Um, and I'm just not saying any kind of music. Music that is the most expressive, soulful, complex, sophisticated, visionary. Um, when I had the first surgery uh, in 2006, I would be listening to music through my headphones, anything from uh, heavy metal music to Korean pansari, which is a matriarchal folk music, folk opera form, to rhythm and blues, um, to the free music of the 60s, anything that was powerful and strong. And um, I couldn't get out of bed because I had major surgery, and uh, but I was dancing in my bed, moving my arms, moving my head, moving my legs while lying down. And it's been the music that I think has kept me going. Um, certainly not the music business, but the music. <laughs> um, and I would have to say the second thing is uh, love for a revolutionary future in the sense that uh, I've never accepted the status quo as the be-all, end-all, as the ultimate end game. And I've always felt that, um, and this comes from the music, as long as you have imagination, you don't have to accept any compromise. You don't have to accept the status quo. You don't have to accept the practical or the pragmatic. Um, and if you let the music and the imagination drive and guide you, you can envision a different world. And how to make that world happen is always the challenge. But it's like how to play the saxophone in a way that hasn't been played, that's also a challenge. So I think those two things, love of revolution and the music, has really been the force um, that sustained me for all these years. Um, with that in mind, um, Art and politics and music and the revolution, it's, it's this big configuration of things that we all I think, aspire to. So one of the questions that I always think about as somebody who, who has been active, um, is doing cultural, cultural work, is how we take some of these lessons from warriors such as yourself and pass that on. So the issue of continuity in movements has been something that uh, we we talked about actually between you and I just about the next generation, um, whether it's within you know Asian American movement or, or any other social movements in the present day. My opinion on that is probably contrary to most, and I get into trouble oftentimes for saying this. But um, there's a, there's an axiom that you study the past in order not to repeat the mistakes. I have a different take on that. I think it's important to study the past, study tradition, et cetera, et cetera, um, to transcend it. Not to have a defensive position that you want to avoid the mistakes, because I think that you have to, whenever you take risks, you're going to make mistakes. That's inevitable. Mistakes are the problem. What's the problem is not allowing yourself to transcend uh, the inherent um, condition or qualities that uh, continue for you to uh, accept compromise and um, you know a, a attenuated or, or um, um, uh, diluted uh, vision. So. Uh, What's important to me is summation, that we, um, we can't go back to the past and the glory days. But here's the thing, nor should we. Nor should we. There's an idealization of the past, that somehow things were better, grander, you know. That if you really went through that period of time, you, you get to understand uh, it's something that you don't really want to go back to. You want to move forward from that. Um, and that's, that's why, you know, I did books about history, 
Legacy of Liberation is a history about the radical revolutionary Asian Pacific American movement. It's still an important text. But um, as a creative artist, I'm not trying to do retrospectives or, um, you know, what, what, what most of the museums do. And that is, you know, uh, uh, museumify, if you will, history. Um, but really see history as something dynamic and creative, and then we've got to make new and better history. Uh, so, so I think that uh, um, I don't really give advice to younger people because uh, you know it's a struggle and a journey you have to really dedicate and commit yourself to. And it's not like you know learning how to bake cookies. There's no recipe for it. You know, you have to constantly do it and make a lot of mistakes. You pick yourself up and go at it again and not be fearful of mistakes. You know, be bold about things, but also understand um, not only to learn from these things, you know, develop expertise, expertise but like in the, the aesthetic of a martial arts or, or Bruce Lee, the point of technique is to have no technique. You have to reach a level of improvisation and intuition that, um, uh, you know, doesn't rely upon your training. Um, and that's the key thing. You know, you have to get to that point to be completely intuitive, not only in the moment, but on a vision quest where you're actually in the moment realizing the future. Some of us call that prefiguration. Okay, so, you know, I have a different view on, on this stuff. That's why I don't go to reunions anymore. That's why I turned down so many speaking engagements to talk about things in the past and so forth. Because I'm not interested in that, nor, nor I think we should learn from it, you know, we study it, but the whole point is to be engaged in creating something different, new, and better.